in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. Yes, Naido has both the Intercontinental and Heavyweight Championship belt. Pasty, before we get into talking about it, again, I felt like Dave Meltzer over here just chucking stars at things. I, I literally <laughs> gave this, this match, I gave an A plus, 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 plus. Because I'd already given an A plus and an A plus plus. I was right. like, where the fuck do I go from? They keep trumping themselves. Where do I go from here? Usually in video games, it goes to S rank. Okay, we're S in this shit. <laughs> yep, the, this is our first S rank match. It's getting S in the A. We're going to S in the A. Holy shit. Everything about this match was on point. From the commentators Clay, talking about how long they fought the night before and how they doubted this match would go even 20 minutes due to the ah. punishment the men have taken. <laughs> I, I looked at I looked at the time and I'm like, wow, there's still a whole other hour to watch after this. <laughs> uh, you're lying to me. <laughs> yeah. And... Oh, I was not let down from the moment this match started to the moment it finished. It was a wild fucking roller coaster ride and the crowd. This is where I noticed the New Japan crowd was probably more on point than they have ever been. Yeah. Loud, crisp, all together in unison when they were trading punches back and forth. I mean, this is a little later on into the match. But when they're trading punches back and forth and the crowd's just going off each one, it's so perfect like how you don't get that in america you get like five p or you know a fifth of the crowd do, doing it off time and ah, it's just amazing it was- well and, and to your point okada went out of his way to be the heel and naido was such a baby face i don't there was you know especially nowadays in wrestling a lot of times when there's two amazing wrestlers, it's 50-50, if not maybe 65-35. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was 97% for Naito, 3% for Okada. Like, everybody was rooting for Naito. Uh-huh. It was not an Okada crowd. They told the story the way they wanted to, and the audience ate it up the way they wanted to. Yes. Okada started out. Just on top, Naito was behind. Naito was nothing. Okada was the man. He was cocky. He was confident. He a bunch of times he, he you know he made off like he could beat he could beat Naito whenever he wanted to. It wasn't important. And, and to be fair, I as a, as an asshole American loved this cocky Okada, especially just oh, yeah. being a huge yeah. Okada mark. Yeah, had him. Uh, he had him in some kind of a, a headlock where he's bent over, and he like got pissed and looked up at the camera with like the best like villain face you've oh. ever seen. Yeah. It could it, have like, been written. stabbed me in the chest. It was amazing. It, to me, it, it um, it felt, I know, I, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're talking about. And if it's the same one that you're talking about, to me, it felt like a page off of a manga. Like uh-huh. I could just picture this being an anime, a manga, just like the, the look in his eyes. Yeah, his I could see the lines in the, the background. Ground, and then he like his eyes come up <laughs> towards you and his head tilts up and he gets this evil smile. It was amazing. And Okada was doing things like slamming Naito face first into the announce table and, Dude, the top and just working Rana. his knee. Oh, shit. Oh! oh, I forgot about that. I don't even have that in my notes, I think, because I was marking out so hard. I'm just, oh. I, I, that's all I did. I wrote down spots because like, I, I need to watch this. Just write down the spot. I don't even know who did it. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Naito on Okada. Yeah, and for those of you who, who maybe don't know what we're talking about with a poison rana, if you know what a hurricane rana is, which I think everybody does, a Frankenstein or hurricane rana, it's basically reversed of that. Yeah. Picture the top guy in the opposite direction. Uh-huh. Um, oh, my God. Just, it's definitely just, a neck cracker for sure. Holy it, shit. It was awesome. Um. Again, we got to the obligatory. Both guys continue to kick out of every guy's finishing moves at the last mm-hmm. possible moment. And that was born in New Japan. But that in this match, I think not only because of how great it is in the performers, but because of what was on the line and how much they've gone through in the last two days. And the announcers saying it, they didn't think it would go 20 minutes. So every it, time the, the three count was counted, it was it like you were on the, I was on the edge of my seat. Every yeah, time, it, like... It didn't seem passe. It didn't seem cliche. It didn't seem more boring. I I actually have that written here, what you just said. I said, made me on the edge of my seat wondering who would take it, Okada or Naito. It's like, yeah, that's it. Um, Naito ended up hitting the Stardust Press, and he followed it up with a Destino, and he won. 
Uh-huh. A prize that's ne- this is something that's never ha- ever 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 happened in New Japan ever. He became not only the first person in New Japan He's history to hold two championships. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> even more than that though because he's the first person to hold two championships ever, ever, yeah. ever, but definitely the two top championships also simultaneously. So yeah. Uh this <sighs> Yeah, I thought for sure Naito was going to lose it when Okada hit he hit a, a rainmaker or he missed the rainmaker, then hit a rainmaker. And then hit him with a tombstone, and then picked him up. I thought he was going to pin him for sure, but then picked him up by the ass of his his shorts and, and hit him with another rainmaker. I thought for sure Naito was done. Yeah, there. there were so many times I knew that was the end. Like I knew it was. I felt like I felt like Vince McMahon back in the '90s. If people remember when he was announcer, and like he obviously he knows who's going to win, but. Oh, almost every single pinfall, even if it wasn't even close, or it was like three minutes into the match, he'd be like, "Oh, hey, one, two, three! Oh, he's got it! He's got! It. Oh, he didn't get him! <laughs> it's a one! It's a! He's got it! Oh, he didn't! Like, <laughs> he just, it made you believe every single time somebody went for a pinfall, it was definite yeah. they were gonna win it. It's like I, I felt that. I felt that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you didn't know what more they could do. Um, <sighs> this what one thing? Oh, I. I Actually, I I want to read my my final two like paragraphs here, and then I, and then we can then I'll let you say your thing, and we can discuss it a little bit more. But uh, just because I I, uh, I I had a muse, this was my muse, and so this is what I got here. I said this was an unbelievable feather in the cap to perhaps the best Wrestle Kingdom I've ever watched. The bar was set with Takahashi Osprey, then it was raised that same night with Okada Ibushi. But Naito Okada smashed through that and put on an epic encounter that we will all be talking about for decades. I don't know how Meltzer plans to rate this, but it definitely, in my opinion, tops all of the Okada Omega matches of Wrestle Kingdom's past. Naito hasn't held the championship since before losing it to Okada in Dominion in 2016, and that's a story there, but he finally got his revenge by becoming the first dual champion in New Japan history. And although the moment was short-lived, though, Pasty, as you kind of uh, alluded to earlier, a post-match attack from Kenta, and I wrote here, who heard Fat Max shitting on his match and wanted to end the pay-per-view in fantastic (laughs) flair as he celebrated holding the two championship belts in the middle of the ring. While (laughs) (laughs) teabagging, while teabagging Naito. Yeah. Like, like, it was all up in your face. It was a great statement to make at the end of an amazing two nights of action. Yeah, so as far as Kenta disappointed me earlier, like, ending this, I marked out for that ending. I'm like, oh, shit, Kenta's moving up in, the, in this this year also, you know? Yeah. And he should. He should. Oh, for real, especially after the shit he went through in, in America here. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, this was just going to be the one guy that they this. allow. He's going to be the one guy they allow to go to AEW. <laughs> Like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I can t- tell this was a great pay-per-view or a couple pay-per-views because I'm so excited just going over it with you, Pasty. Uh-huh. No, no. My heart's and, beating. And the thing, you, you were reading your final two paragraphs. The, uh, the Most of the time I was watching this, I was like, holy shit, this might be the best pay-per-view I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm just saying that because I'm in the moment. But you're saying it, and I'm saying it. And it's got to be, it's got to be at least close to right. It's got to be. And like I I told you either since we recorded or before, I can't, it's been too much now, but I do want to set for a couple days and then go and rewatch it again and, and even pick out just a couple matches and rewatch mm. them a few times. Because, yes, you do get into it in the moment, but um, it's definitely one of the best pay-per-views of all time. Yes, and, and definitely a great refresher after the last year of wrestling we've had. Oh, we could have used this. If this is a if this is a sign of things to come, we're 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 definitely starting off better. And my last note on Wrestle Kingdom uh, night two alone because I didn't watch night one, but it was enough to make me say Wrestle Kingdom will be the measuring stick to which all 2020 events will be held up to. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. Nobody's touching New Japan. It, nobody. AEW has their work cut out from. AEW has had some great pay-per-views, some lackluster, but some great. NXT always has some great takeovers. 
This is the you year know, to WWE see what happens. might be number one money making wrestling company in the world, but I they are no might be they are yeah. This this pay per view definitely, at least for me, and I'm sure millions of other wrestling fans pushed them over WWE. Oh, for sure. They're like um, and I might be getting my analogy screwed up, but they're like Van Gogh. I think Van Gogh was the the painter who died broke and poor, and you know nobody bought his paintings and shit. No, no, it wasn't Van Gogh. I think he was huge, wasn't he? No, Da Vinci was. Yeah, I think Van Gogh. Van Gogh. He, he died poor, and and you know nobody nobody cared about him. And now all these years later, we know he's a genius. It's that's a that's a New Japan is there Van Gogh? Right. And to break it all down for you folks, we tied the first night, but the final score as of night two was me five, Fat Mac three. Pacey's starting off this year good after a uh, abysmal. I don't think we ever <laughs> talked about that. No, an abysmal last year. Let me bring it up real quick because I wanna I wanna bask in my own glory here. Bask in 2019, in oh, I didn't even rate. Thought down you said you didn't know had. Keith Lee's theme, theme song. I don't even have it. But <laughs> fat. So we'll have to it say, for fat you next Mac week, folks. Did a good job of beating Pasty White last year. Oh, I'm sure. <clears throat> um, we will have it next week. We're only we, counting we AEW pay-per-views, though. So, oh, okay. Well, then maybe it's a little different. <laughs> um, we got to do Pasty the obligatory. Oh, wait a second. If we're counting both matches together. That made Pasty White got nine right. Fat Mac only got uh seven right. So, way to go, Pasty. You're starting the the year out strong. Yes. Uh, best match of the night. Do we both agree? The double dash. Yeah. The yeah. double gold dash. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, now, do we give have, night two an S rank, or do we give the final grade for both shows an S rank? Well, night two for sure is more than an A plus. Yeah. Um, what do we put a final grade? For, you know, to me, um, yeah, I think I think both. I think we just call the, the full grade S, right? All right. Yeah, yeah, because it's gonna be the I'm entire not let, thing is what everything else. Is gonna I'm not gonna let night one bring down night two at all. <laughs> It was. It wasn't horrible. If it was horrible, then yeah, it would. But no, we're yeah. gonna give them an S. We Pasty gave us a brand new rating this year. Both yeah. Pasty and New Japan gave us a brand new rating this year. Mm-hmm. S. And, baby. and it just goes to determine. It's gonna definitely hold us to our word come next year's beefies, because <laughs> it's gonna be real hard to earn an S after this. Damn straight. You gotta beat this. Oh. <laughs> That's is it possible? Maybe maybe next year's Wrestle Kingdom. Can you beat uh, our beefy? Ah, <laughs> uh, it is that time of the week again, folks. Oh, yeah. And with it's it being time. that time, Pasty, I am busting into an Alaskan brewing company, Hellas Ale. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. It is time for this week's Savage Sentinel, where we break in and break down and break up and smoke. All the news from pro wrestling this week, which probably isn't all of it, because I'm sure we missed quite a bit, because we got a lot to cover <laughs> on this show. Yes. So oh, if you read Pace- the description, you'll know AEW has something to do with uh, Australia's wildfires. What? What? Yeah. They're yeah. that hot down there? They're over there burning the burning it down, stealing Seth Rollins' theme song and just lighting shit on fire. No. Cody Rhodes is doing his part to help the koalas and the dingoes. On a Sunday, Cody tweeted, I had an unused retro shirt design. I've decided to put it online. 100% of the profits go to the NSW Rural Fire Service to help provide support to those affected by the catastrophic fires spreading across Australia. It's great. That is great. He's doing his part. It's great that so many folks are stepping up. It's uh, not only sick to to know what's going on down there. The sickest part is that three people, at least three people, have been put in custody for deliberately setting uh, for deliberate arson, yeah. purposely That's... setting fire. Disgusting, and even more disgusting when uh, I know a lot of times people uh, exaggerate that same thing a lot. Just of... happened down in South America too when they were on fire. Companies yeah. went out and start burning more because all it is is after it's all gone, that's that's business space. And um, <laughs> people exaggerate stuff, and I'm sure this some of this is exaggerated, but it sounds like it's there's a possibility that 50 percent of the wildlife in Australia 
could become severely endangered to instinct by the end of this fire. Because there's so many 